Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. Last week we looked at bleaching our prints and this week's after work is spotting. Let's check it out. So before we start let's just cover some basics about this. I use spot tone colors which are now owned by Marshalls and I use the basic pack. So I have the selenium brown, I have a neutral black which is the most common one to use and I have the blue black. You can mix these colors together to try to recreate the tone of your print. Talking about toning, if you've toned your print in selenium or something like this it can be much harder to match the print and you can buy a bigger pack of these dyes that will help you get a better match. So here's a print that I want to spot. It's on a warm tone paper and I'm going to use the warm tone or the selenium brown color of the dye. The next thing we're going to need to do is I'm going to need a piece of paper so that I can lean on the print without getting my greasy hands on. Some people like to use cotton gloves. I'm not one for cotton gloves. I like to feel the brush um, are much more tactile. So I'll just use a piece of paper to protect the print. We're also going to need a very fine brush. This is a zero zero, I believe. Um, very fine. It's a real hair brush and it comes to a, a very fine point and that's important. I also have a small dish here. It's actually from inside of a chocolate box and I use that to put my dyes in. And finally, I have a piece of paper up here which is of the same type as the one I'm spotting. This is a fiber based gloss print. So I've got a piece of fiber based paper here that I've cut off another print that's been processed and fixed. And I'll use this to check the intensity of the dye before I put it on my piece of paper. This explanation of everything uh, that we need for spotting is probably more than the actual job of spotting itself. So let's get on with that. Now I can see my spots. There's a trick here. If you turn your print upside down, you've a good chance of seeing more spots and other things wrong with the print. For instance, on a landscape, you may see a bit of cloud coming in on the side, which is distracting and you're going to want to spot that out as well and other things that you may spot. So, oh spot, sorry about the pun. So here we go. I can see some white dots that I need to get rid of. And there's a very distracting one there. I've got a, a special cloth here. Yes, there's one here which is quite distracting. I'm not sure if that's not a reflection of something else, but I'm going to spot that out as well. And I didn't notice that when it was the right way round. So turning it upside down really does help. So here we go. I'm going to get my brown and I'm going to put a little drop of that inside there like so. I'm going to get my piece of paper here so that I'm not going to get grease on the print and I'll pull I'll bring these in close so you can see them. Normally I would have them spread around on the table a little bit more but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing here. All right. So first things first, there's some water over here, just plain water. They do say in the instructions not to add any photo flow or LFN or any of those other wetting agents because I believe these have already got that kind of thing in them, these dyes. So I'm going to get a little bit of dye on my brush. I'm going to add it to this water that I've put. And I like the color. The color is a good match to this print. Now I want to get as much off as I can. I want to get so much off that there's next to nothing left on this brush. There we are. And then very carefully, I'm just going to put one little dot on each of these spots that I see. Just one tiny dot. That's right. I didn't focus on one spot and try to do it all at once. There's a really good reason for that. 
As you move from dot to dot to dot, you build up the color very slowly on the emulsion. And eventually, as you're moving round, you can't find them anymore. Suddenly they vanish, and that's when you know you've got it just right. So let's do that again. They've had time to be absorbed into the emulsion. And that, by the way, is mainly what's happening. They get absorbed into the emulsion. There's a little spot here, and a spot here, and another one on this big one here. And I'm just going to keep doing that. This is a very happy spot here. Let me just give you a little color there. Lovely. And we just keep, in fact, there was one here, I think, and I can't see it anymore. So that very quickly went, oh, there's some here. Spot, 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 spot. It's quite a relaxing thing to do, actually. There's a little bit of color back on the brush. A bit of water. There we are. Now these dyes go into the emulsion. So you do have to be very careful and take your time in spotting because if you overdo it, it's a bit difficult to get them off again. Little spots there, one there. It's quite hard to do this from behind the camera. I think I'm giving you an idea of how it works. So I just keep going around. One little spot at a time. And I don't finish the spot off. I just add another little tiny spot of the dye. It's, that seeps into the emulsion quite quickly. So by the time I come back to it, I'm ready to build up a little more color and a little more color and a little more color until they've disappeared. It's quite relaxing. You see there, I'm just getting the last, the most of it off the brush. If I put too much on the brush, I'll end up with a big blob and when that soaks into the emulsion, it tends to get a ring around it. And then you'll be able to see it. Okay, boom, boom. I can see what this is now there. It's a leaf and these flowers that's reflecting more light than the other ones. So this will help to bring it down to a much better level compared to the rest of the print. There was one down here, but it's completely vanished. These are still here. I can still see these. Now, if you have black dots that you need to get rid of, you need to knife the black dots off and we'll cover that on another video but it's another skill that's worth practicing like this one and of course you can practice on your test strips until you get the knack of this another tip is to start on dark areas before you move to light areas because when the ink or dye initially goes onto the print it gives a little heavier or darker impression and so start with dark and move to light very hard for me to see from so far away. 
I can see I'm making mistakes on this, but that's okay. It's good to demonstrate to you how to do this. Anyway. And so on. And on and on until they have disappeared. I hope this has been a useful video for you to see. I know there are spotting videos on the internet, and I've seen some of them, but they seem to focus on the same spot all the time, and that is not the way I learned to do it. And I find by moving from spot to spot like I'm doing now, it's much easier to get exactly the tone that you want and for the spot to disappear to the human eye and become invisible. Thanks for watching. If you like this kind of video or channel, please give me a like. Why don't you subscribe and see more of this darkroom magic in the next episode. Bye for now.